So, let's talk about Smile 2. It seems to be a movie that everybody's enjoying. The first movie came out, it made a lot of money, people really enjoyed Smile 1, and it looks like people are having a great time with Smile 2. It looks like the critics have a lot to say about this movie. So the breakdown for this video, guys, we're going to jump over here to Comic Book Movie, have a quick read of this article, then we'll go over to Rotten Tomatoes, check out the tomato score, see where this movie is currently sitting, at what percentage, then we'll go over also and check out what the critics had to say regarding this movie. So let's jump straight in, let's break it down, and let's see what's going on with this Smile 2 movie. So like I said, this comes to us from comicbookmovie.com. Smile 2 Rotten Tomatoes score revealed as first wave of reviews and final trailer are scared up. So Smile arrived in theatres in 2002 and earned $217 million uh, worldwide on a $17 million budget. I've said this ad nauseum at this point on the channel, but indie horror films are the way to go if you're just starting out in Hollywood. I mean, you look at the Terrifier franchise, they just made Terrifier 2 on a $2 million budget and it made nearly $20 million in its opening weekend. And this just goes to further, you know, show the example here. A $17 million budget and it made $217 million worldwide. The return on investment for horror movies is just insane. So that's a massive profit for a horror movie and Paramount wasted no time in developing a sequel, Smile 2, which is set to be released this Friday. Absolutely, if you can make a $17 million movie into $217 million, of course you're going to greenlight a sequel as soon as possible. <laughs> So based on the first wave of reviews, this follow-up is just as good, perhaps not better than its predecessor. However, as we first reported on fearhq.com, new lead Naomi Scott from Power Rangers is receiving a lot of praise for her performance, and it sounds like there are plenty of scares for horror fans to get excited about. So the rest of the article here, guys, it just goes into reviews, which we're going to read over on Rotten Tomatoes. So with that down, that new story there, a $17 million budget, 217 million profit for the first movie and uh, Naomi Scott obviously uh, getting praised for her performance in Smile 2. By the way I saw Smile 2 last night she did a great job in this movie. It's very much a copy and paste in a lot of respects of Smile 2. To, uh, Smile 2 is a copy and paste I should say sorry. Um, a copy and paste from the first movie. A lot of the story beats are very similar. A person gets a demonic presence attached to them. They slowly unwind psychologically throughout the movie. Things get crazier. They start seeing visions. They commit crimes, which they didn't realize they were doing. And ultimately, the end of the Smile 2 is very similar to what happens in Smile 1. I'm not going to give it away or any spoilers. I did have a fun time with it, but in a lot of ways, it does feel like a copy and paste of the first movie. They do try some small new kind of horror tactics in the second movie, things that weren't in the first movie. But again, a lot of it does feel kind of treading, retreading what we saw in the first movie. But that's not to say that it's still not a good movie. I had a good time with it. I did enjoy it, and I do recommend watching it if you haven't seen it, guys. So anyway, with that down, uh, let's go over to Rotten Tomatoes here. So, Smile 2 is currently sitting at 79% of 58 reviews. <coughs> Sorry, uh, 58 reviews. So, the synopsis here, about to embark on a new world tour, global pop sensation Sky Riley, played by Naomi Scott, begins experience increasingly terrify terrifying and inexplicable events. Overwhelmed by the escalating horrors and the pressures of fame, Sky is forced to face her dark past to regain control of her life before it spirals out of control. Yeah, she's a famous pop star and she's about to start a brand new worldwide singing tour. And um, obviously this kind of demon, demonic presence attaches to her. She starts losing her mind and she risks losing all of her fame, all of her fortune, everything she's built out built up throughout her life so that's a unique perspective in smile 2 that we didn't see in the first smile movie so they approach it from a different angle but then again a lot of the story beats are very much repeated but the whole singer fame aspect does inject new life into the movie so i will give it that but let's go over let's read some of these reviews we're going to read the top critic reviews and uh, see what they had to say so from the observer for fans of the first film, it's more of the same, and for any casual horror viewers who are up for the Funhouse thriller this October, it'll do the trick. Uh, from Slant Magazine, Parker Finn, like his identity, is interested in getting his bony fingers into those uh, sticky tender parts we'd rather hide away, slurping our pain like Ambrosia and confronting us with the fact that more often than not, the enemy is staring back at you. From Little White Lies, um, it's all... Uh, it's all exceptionally uh, silly and fans of the first film might find the first hour a little more than a rehash of Smile. That's what I was saying guys, a lot of the story beats are very much uh, repeated in Smile 2. But there's still something admirable about Parker Finn's gusto. Yeah, 
There's enough new stuff and enough fun to be had with Smile 2 to still recommend watching it, even though a lot of it is repeated. So, from uh, Substack, uh, Christomania, uh, the first splat here. What started out as an inventive little horror feature transforms into a boring, generic drama with a runtime so bloated you'll start to wonder if anyone just forgot what kind of film they were making. So this person really didn't like it. They say it's bloated, um, that it's boring, that it's generic. I do understand where they're coming from to some some degree, but I think the, the fun parts, the horror parts do overtake that um, kind of generic drama aspect of the movie. So from Bloody Disgusting, it's not just the sequels razor sharp and inventive, gory scares that surpass its predecessor, but a profoundly complicated heroine shaping the edgier style of horror. From Screen International, Smile 2 um, uh, has its audacious moments, but as Finn's script unveils implausible plot twists, the sequel elicits neither terror nor smiles, but rather shrugs. Um, that's another splat as well. From IGM Movies, from the writer-director of 2022's horror Sleeper Smile, comes a solid sequel that sticks the suicide hex Phantom on a pop star played in a highly volatile, committed performance by Adeline's, uh, Aladdin's, not Adeline's, by Aladdin's Naomi Scott. Variety, the movie is hardly subtle, yet Parker Finn has become a clever enough filmmaker to make reality feel like a hallucination and hallucinations feel like reality. The rap, Smile 2, is more of the same, a lot more, but it's just as scary and this time it's festier and funnier proving that the premise has legs and also some malleability. So yeah, you can change it up a little bit. I think going into the third movie, they're going to have to really change up the kind of the formula of what they've done. They can't just repeat the, the last two movies. They have to really change up the formula, change up the way that they kind of approach this movie. But I think, you know, they can make a small three. But like I say, they need to change it up again. Keep injecting fresh content in there to keep the fans coming back. So, uh, from IndieWire, more than anything, the sequel is proof that the endless versatility could turn Smile movies into an October box office fixture for decades to come. Still, uh, from Hollywood Reporter, sorry, still there's much to be said for the director. So, um, over encumbered by uh, timi timidity, and sequel will leave plenty of horror fans grinning from ear to ear. And finally, from the Daily Beast. Finn's second feature may not be as consistent of a roller coaster ride as his maiden effort, but it gets the job done frequently enough to be a chart topper. Yeah, so people are kind of, um, you know, repeating what I was saying about, you know, there's parts that it kind of rehashes from the first movie. A lot of it is a copy and paste, but just because that's the fact of copy and paste of the first movie in a lot of aspects, it doesn't mean that it's not still a fun, fun movie, and I recommend watching it, guys. So get out and see it whenever you can. And that's kind of where we are. So we're sitting at a 79% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes from 58, uh, 58 reviews, 79%, almost 80%. For this kind of um smile franchise i think that's fantastic it looks like it's going to do well at the box office again i'm not sure what the production budget for this second movie is i'm sure it's going to be more than the first but if it comes back and it can make you know 200 million dollars potentially 300 for the sequel if people go out and watch it then i think it's doing great and um i think there's going to be more of these movies in the future because a lot of people seem to enjoy smile i enjoyed it i had a good time with it like i say and um, yeah, I recommend going out to watch it. But guys, after seeing these reviews and this Rotten Tomato score of 79%, what do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts, comments, and opinions. Jump down and let me know. Are you going to watch this movie this weekend when it comes out? Are you excited to see it? Or do you think it's just as generic, bland, kind of throwaway psychological horror that we've kind of all seen before? Whatever your thoughts are, like I say, pop down in the comment section, guys. Can't wait to hear what you have to say about this. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. So it looks like Pokemon developer Game Freak was hacked a few days ago and well I never condone any hacking of any kind guys whether it's you know TV shows whether it's movies whether it's gaming the silver lining in this news story is that we've got some fantastic information and updates regarding potential Detective Pikachu and Pokemon live action movies going into the future. So let's break down this article here, which comes to us from Gamefragger. Let's see what kind of information we can find out about potential sequels to Detective Pikachu. So this article is called Detective Pikachu sequel and Game Boy movie discovered in massive game freak hack. Again, it's never great to hear about any companies being hacked, having their employees information kind of, um, you know, downloaded and potentially sold through nefarious means, um, you know, and kind of having these projects delayed and destroyed because people are hacking into it. It's never a good thing, guys. But like I keep saying, even though it's not good at the same time, it gives us great information here about potentially what's going on in the future with live action Pokemon. I've always wondered as well, just to go off on a side note, 
why is there not more live action Pokemon? You would expect in this day and age with all the great CGI and all that, all this kind of technology that we have now, where is the live action Pokemon? Because it's, it's so ripe to have live action series or movies made from Pokemon, but we just don't see it and it's very, very strange. So, Pokemon franchise developer Game Freak suffered a major hack this weekend, resulting in a ton of private information becoming public. That's where it gets scary. When you have employee information that's leaked out online, that's never a good thing whatsoever. So, while much of the information pertained to Pokemon video games, we're going to be here. We're not here to talk about the video game aspect of the hack, guys. We're here to talk about the uh, the live action Pokemon aspect of the hack. Um, there are also reports of a trilogy of live action movies planned for the franchise. A trilogy of live action movies planned. That's really, really exciting. Obviously, we haven't had an update for Detective Pikachu in such a long time. So many fans of that first movie, because I thought that first movie was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. Obviously, Ryan Reynolds did the voice of uh, Detective uh, Pikachu, you know, Deadpool himself. And with Ryan Reynolds being at his all-time peak popularity because of Wolverine and Deadpool, now is the perfect time to come back and do another sequel, in my opinion. But yeah, a trilogy of live action movies, that would be so exciting, especially if Ryan Reynolds was obviously involved as well. So one of the movies was, of course, Detective Pikachu, but it seems that there was a sequel planned titled The Great Detective Pikachu. The movie has been in development since 2021. So apparently the complete plot of the movie is contained in the leak, but we won't be sharing that here. That's absolutely understandable. This information isn't supposed to be public and sharing the plot of the movie could be detriment to its production. So I completely understand why we're not going to be kind of talking about the actual uh, plot. Plus, as a fan of the movie, I don't want it to be spoiled for me, you know, way in advance. So you can kind of understand why we're not going to be talking about it here, guys. So Kong Skull Island, uh, director John Vaught Roberts is attached to helm the movie. Interestingly, we don't quite know the status of the film. The film was reportedly planned to be released in 2024, but obviously that hasn't happened. There's been no formal announcement and we're already at the end of the year, so we're not quite sure if it's still happening. Obviously with this hack and this leak, maybe it's put a spanner in the production. Maybe they've had to go back and now change things and reconsider what they're doing because of all this leaked information. Obviously, you know, um, stopping that leak of information, you know, um, backing up their security on their servers and kind of at their at their headquarters and all that kind of stuff is obviously you know priority for the for the developer at the moment so maybe that's taken precedent over the development of this movie and maybe the movie's going to get delayed but um we'll have to wait and see if we get any updates in the near future so released in 2019 pokemon detective pikachu is a live action movie loosely based on the 2016 video game of the same name it was written and directed by bob letterman and starred ryan reynolds again having deadpool in there um doing the voice at the moment, if they brought out a sequel and people found out that Deadpool was voicing Pikachu, people would lose their damn minds. So, Ryan Reynolds as the voice as the facial uh, motion capture of Pikachu. Um, it was the first live action Pokemon film and the first ever live action film based on a Nintendo game property since 1993's Super Mario Brothers. We all know how that turned out. That was a massive disaster. <laughs> And 1993's Super Mario Brothers. Guys, if you have not seen anything to do with that, just go on YouTube, check out a trailer to 1993's Super Mario Brothers, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to disasters. Um, the film was both a critical and commercial success, earning 450 million worldwide. It was the highest grossing video game adaptation of all time before being surpassed by Illumination's Super Mario Brothers movie in 2023. So this just this adds to the pile of things that just don't make sense the movie made 450 million dollars worldwide for a first movie in a brand new kind of um ip like a detective pikachu live action movie nearly half a billion dollars that's fantastic it was the highest grossing video game adaptation of all time as well two massive accolades for that movie how did they not green light a sequel almost instantaneously and get it going it doesn't make any sense to me um, there must have been a reason why they decided not to just go straight ahead with it with a sequel. So Nintendo has already greenlit a sequel to the Super Mario Brothers movie. Exactly, they've done it with Super Mario Brothers, but then again, that made a hell of a lot more money, so I kind of understand that. And even announced a release date for April 3rd, 2026. However, there's been uh, nothing about Detective Pikachu sequel yet, which feels a bit strange given that the movie was also a commercial hit. Yeah, like we were just talking about, the fact that it made loads of money, people loved it, I think it did quite well critically as well. And um, yeah, all across the board, the movie did really, really well uh, commercially. So it, it's very, very strange why they didn't just go straight into a sequel. A third film unrelated to Detective Pikachu movie was also mentioned in the leak, titled Game Boy. 
The movie aims to dig deep into the themes of Pokemon's boundless potential, creating a story that highlights the importance of bonds, whether uh, between friends or between Pokemon themselves. That sounds quite wholesome and quite, you know, quite cheerful. I, I kind of like that. At first, it may seem like a simple story, but by showcasing unexpected situations, such as moments when bonds are broken and how one overcomes trauma, it brings out its unique flavor. The leaked teasers. Uh, when one bond ends, a new bond is born. You may not know that yet. At this point, the status of the film is also unknown. So let's just go back over that again quickly. So Detective Pikachu movie, um, an unrelated third film, um, aims to dig deep into the theme of Pokemon's boundless potential, creating a story that highlights the importance of bonds. That's that's quite nice. That's obviously what a lot of the Pokemon stories are about. You know, forming that bond with your Pokemon, um, you know, and kind of finding your place in the world, that sense of adventure, that kind of friendship with Pokemon and other Pokemon trainers and people you meet along the way on your own individual um, adventure. So, you know, that kind of sticks with the Pokemon theme that we all know and love. Um, when bonds are broken and how one overcomes trauma, it brings out the unique flavor. Uh, when one bond ends, a new bond is born. Uh, you may not know that yet. Yeah, so it sounds wholesome. It sounds, you know, family friendly. It sounds great. It's, it does fit in with the kind of Pokemon stories that we already know. Um, so yeah, that's great. And I'm really, really excited for the future of live action Pokemon. I want to see more of it because like I keep saying, this first Detective Pikachu movie, it was so charming. It was so fun. The adventure, the CGI was phenomenal. Um, yeah. And you know, Pikachu himself was really fun, really cute, really charming. And people really, really love that first movie. And they've been waiting such a long time for a sequel or any kind of development update, you know, for potential live action projects when it comes to Pokemon. But guys, I throw it off to you. What do you think about this potential leak here saying that there's going to be a trilogy of live action Pokemon movies, potentially a follow up to Detective Pikachu called um, The Great Detective Pikachu? Do you think that's a great way to go to have another Detective Pikachu movie? Or do you think they should get rid of that and just go more generic Pokemon rather than focusing on Detective Pikachu? Whatever your thoughts are about this leak and this information we've discussed here, guys, Jump into the comment section, leave your thoughts, comments, and opinions on this and what you would and what you would potentially like to see in live action Pokemon. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. So, guys, we need to talk about this wicked situation. It's gotten out of hand. It's absolutely ridiculous. I want to cover it here on the channel. I'm sure you guys have seen it doing the rounds on social media. So, the upcoming Wicked movie, it looks set to be a massive opening. It looks like there's going to be um, a lot of people that are very, very interested in watching this movie. And fans themselves have come out and made fan-made posters of the movie, like they do with any big temple Hollywood movies. Fans, they go online, they make their own concept art, they make their own fan posters. Some people even make, you know, fan-made trailers. But it looks like Cynthia Arrivo, the actual actress in this movie who plays the Green Witch, she's come out and attacked fans for making one particular fan-made poster. The poster that they made is more in keeping with the Broadway musical. They've changed it ever so slightly, edited it. It actually looks quite fun. They've shared it millions of times on social media, you know, doing Hollywood's job of actually marketing the movie. And it looks like Cynthia Arrivo, like I said, has come out and attacked the fans for making a fan-made poster. So it's all kinds of crazy. Um, they did nothing wrong. They weren't racist. They weren't bigoted. They didn't, you know, do anything wrong towards the actress. But she felt like she needed to come out, bash, attack, um, whatever word you want to use, the fan base, which was all kinds of wrong. But anyway, guys, let's jump into the story from Comic Book Movie. Let's break it down. Let's get into the details and see what's going on with this story. So, Wicked uh, star Cynthia Arrivo lashes out at fan edited posters for being degrading, hurtful, and wildly offensive. I've had a look at this poster now, this fan-made poster, and it's literally none of these things. None of them portray her in a bad light. They haven't edited, you know, editor, edited her face or appearance to make her look less attractive. They haven't done anything like that whatsoever. They've just made it more in line with that original Broadway musical poster, and um, hardly anything about the posters even changed. So how it can be degrading, hurtful, or wildly offensive, I have no idea. But let's go down, like I say, and uh, let's get into the details here. So when tickets for Wicked went on sale earlier this month, a poster was released that paid homage to the classic piece of artwork used for Broadway musical. Um, it wasn't fully accurate though, leading to uh, various fan edits surfacing on social media, which were meant to bring more in line with the original, uh, many of which have racked up millions of views. Like I say, in some respects, the fan-made posters here, which are being shared millions and millions of times, 
bringing more attention to this movie. They're actually doing Hollywood's marketing for them when it comes to this movie. So if anything, the actress should come out and say, I really, really appreciate you guys for making fan-made posters. Thank you so much for advertising my movie and sharing it with millions of people. I really do appreciate that. So they should be coming out and thanking the fans, not attacking the fans. So this is where it gets kind of crazy in my opinion. So this included giving Cynthia Arrivo's um, Alpha Bada, Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Ba, Alpha Ba. I always mispronounce that, so I do apologize. Alpha Ba. Alpha Ba, red lipstick, and having the character's witch hat cover the actor's eyes. As best we can tell, no changes were made to Ariana Grande's uh, Glinda, uh, despite the fact that she was in pink dress rather than a white one. Now, Arrivo has lashed out at fans who made those uh, who made those calling the edited poster deeply hurtful. Taking to Instagram, she said the following. So let's have a look at the actual. Um, we've got a social media post here, kind of summing up what she had to say. So let's go in and take a look at what Cynthia Arrivo had to say. So this is the wildest, most offensive thing I have ever seen. Equal to that awful AI of us fighting. Equal to people posing the question, "Is your pussy green?" Yeah, I mean, I, I can understand when people start saying things like that. I can understand how that can be hurtful, saying things like, is your pussy green and stuff like that. Because obviously she's a green witch in the movie. When you start getting into like talking about her body parts and stuff like that, then that is crossing the line in my opinion. That's going too far. You don't start talking about a woman's body parts, even a male's body parts, whatever. The sex is irrelevant here, but talking about someone's private parts, you know, that's kind of too much in my opinion. None of this is funny, none of this is cute, it degrades me, it degrades us. After pointing out the original poster was simply an illustration, the Pinocchio star added, I am real life human being who uh, who chose to look down the barrel of the camera to you, the viewer, because without words, we communicate with our eyes. Our poster is a homage, not an imitation. To edit my face and hide my eyes is to erase me, and that is just deeply hurtful, Arrivo, Arrivo uh, concluded. So, I guess, um, to play devil, devil's advocate for a second, um, I'm not in a position where I, I can tell her how she has to feel. If she feels offended and deeply hurt by this fan-made poster, then that's her right to feel that way. Nobody should be told how to feel about something. If she feels offended, then she feels offended. But looking at it from a, um, you know, from a, a fan's perspective, it feels very strange because there's nothing here that's offensive. There's nothing here that's bigoted. They didn't make her look less attractive. They didn't, you know, manipulate her appearance in any way to make her, you know, look ridiculous. So nothing like that happened. It's literally just a fan-made poster that's more in line with the Broadway musical. Nothing bad has been done here. Nothing nefarious. It's just fans who are excited about the movie who wanted to make a Broadway musical rendition of the poster for the movie and kind of share it with other fans for this upcoming movie. So, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to understand why she feels that way of being offended um, from this poster. But again, like I say, we have no right to tell someone how to feel about something. Um, there are bound to be some fans who will now feel attacked by the actor for what they probably felt were harmless edits to bring um, the one sheet more in line with the stage production's poster. They're also at uh, risk her comments uh, being misinterpreted, uh, misrepresented. No, let me read that again, sorry. There are also a risk of her comments are misinterpreted, misinterpreted and treated like a disregard for the musical, potentially leading to some of Wicked's hardcore fan base rejecting this adaptation. Yeah, everything was kind of um, roses. Everything was coming up great. Fans were so, so hyped for this movie. It was on track to do a great opening weekend. The buzz, the anticipation, the hype, um, the feeling around this movie with the fan base was just absolutely kind of um, gangbusters. But now she's kind of thrown a spanner into the works. She's given people a reason to attack this movie to reject it to not go and watch it and to attack fans like this for no reason um i feel that she went about it in the wrong way she could have been a lot more polite a lot more classy in the way that she came across with her message of being offended but um just to go out like this and just blatantly attack fans who have done nothing wrong at least as far as i can see maybe you feel a bit different but as far as i can see fans have done nothing wrong here and for her to attack fans like this um, it's definitely going to put people off seeing the movie and um, we'll have to see if it ultimately affects the box office at the end of the day I don't think it's going to have a massive effect, but it will have some effect But how big or how small that is like I say, we'll have to wait and see So still um, Arrivo clearly feels strongly about the changes as is her right and decided to voice that in the blistering Instagram stories um, that you can read below So obviously we've already um, checked out this kind of Instagram story. So we won't go back over this again Um this is a new one here, though. Uh, let me put this right here to remind you and cleanse your palate. So I'm not really sure what that's about. Obviously, we've got the poster here to Wicked. 
Um, let me put this right here and remind you and cleanse your palate. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even sure what that means, to be honest with you. Um, kind of crazy. So, um, and then uh, the rest of it is just kind of talking about the synopsis of the movie. Have a pause and read of it if you want to, guys. Um, I'm not going to go for it right now, but have a pause and read of the synopsis here if you want to at your own leisure. Uh, Wicked arrives in theaters November 22nd. Wicked Part 2 follows November 1st, 2025. Okay, so there's two parts to this movie. There's, there's going to be two movies. I didn't realize there was going to be two movies. So with that down, let's go over to social media and let's see what people are saying about what's going on with this kind of controversy because you know a lot of people are going to have things to say on social media. So let's jump over here to X. So starting off with this, Cynthia Arrivo, uh, when you change a poster to look like the original just for funsies. So let's have a look at this. So someone's made an AI video, the poster here, and then someone's took an AI uh, video generation program and run it through the program. And it's turned it into a short video of the two lead actresses fighting. This is kind of crazy. So let's have a look at this. So as you can see, they start f <laughs> I thought that was actually really funny. I mean, obviously, as it goes through, their faces start getting distorted, and um, you can clearly tell this is an AI-generated um, video. But to see this poster come alive, and then the two lead actresses start fighting, Ariana Grande and Cynthia Revo kind of fighting each other on the poster, that's really funny, and whoever came up with that idea, I give them credit, because it's, it's kind of hilarious. Like I say, at the moment, we can, tell you, we can tell it's AI, but in, you know, four or five years' time, when AI programs become so, so good, and you can't tell... This kind of stuff is going to look insane and kind of crazy. And social media is going to be a, a crazy place to explore in the future with this kind of stuff. But yeah, so that's an AI video there of the two actresses fighting on the post, which is kind of funny. So let's move on to the next post. Um, imagine thinking fans editing a bad wicked movie poster to be more like the Broadway poster is the most offensive thing um, ever seen. In an election season, as we face wars, the Cynthia Erivo is an insufferable idiot. Get over yourself, girl, before you tank your own movie. So I do agree with that to some degree. You come out, think about all the people that have worked on this movie, the production crews, the director, all of the people, thousands of people that have worked on this movie, put blood, sweat and tears to making this movie great, getting fans hyped and excited. For the lead actress to come out and attack fans and basically kind of sabotage this movie. I mean, can you even imagine the people behind the scenes who worked on this who are thinking god what is she doing why is she doing this she's tanking our movie by coming out with these comments and um yeah it's absolutely crazy so yeah she does need to get over herself she could have approached this subject in a, a lot more of a classy um kind of non-combative aggressive way but um yeah she chose to come out and be aggressive towards the fans it's not going to go down well hopefully it doesn't affect the box office but like i keep saying we'll have to wait and see so let's move on to the next post so, uh, people digging up Cynthia Arrivo's old offensive as fuck tweets, as she really needs to shut the fuck up with talking about that so disrespectful. So, people have started digging into her background, digging up her old tweets about things she used to say, comments she used to make that were quite offensive to a lot of people. So, she has no right to say that fans are being offensive by editing her poster, when, in fact, she used to comment and post a lot of kind of controversial things. So, you know, fans have started digging up those old tweets. So I invite you guys, if you want to jump into that story a bit more, that's a bit of a separate story from what we're talking about. It does link in a little bit, but if you want to go in and kind of, you know, start kind of investigating yourself about things she used to say and what kind of person she is, then go on social media, just type in Cynthia Arrivo and it will come up with these kind of old tweets. You can jump into that if you want to, guys. But that's just adding another kind of angle to this already kind of controversy surrounding Wicked. So go over and investigate that yourself, guys, if you're interested in digging into that a little bit more so and then we're going to finish off with this the entire project cast and crew of wicked watching cynthia arrivo sabotage the hype of the movie and obviously there's a lot of people here which are kind of um face palming which are kind of um dreading the what's going to happen with this movie now like i said all the production crew that worked on this movie thinking you know this one actress has come out sabotaged the movie for all of them all of the hard work they've put in just gone down the drain because of what she's come out and done with the fan base after they made a harmless fan edit to a poster just to make it more in line with the broadway musical they weren't bigoted they weren't racist they didn't do anything bad and again it's just kind of a crazy crazy story that she's potentially tanked this movie because she fa she felt offended um, again, I'm not telling her how to feel. I'm not saying that she was wrong for feeling that way. Maybe she did feel offended. Maybe she did. But to come out and attack your fan base on social media, never a good thing to do. But guys, I throw it off to you. What do you think about this story of Cynthia Arrivo coming out and basically attacking the fan base for making 
uh, a fan-made poster that was more in line with the Broadway musical. Were the fans right to do it? Were they wrong to do it? You know, and what do you think about the way that she approached attacking the fans? Do you think it was a good way that she went about it? Do you think it was a bad way? And just leave your thoughts, comments, and opinions about this overall story. I can't wait to hear what you have to say because I'm sure you guys will have a lot of thoughts, comments, and opinions. And by the way, just another question before we finish off. Has this put you off seeing the movie? Has it changed your opinion on going to watch this movie? Or are you still excited as you were before this controversy happened? That's another question that I'd be interested for you guys to talk about in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe before you leave. And I will see you in the next one.